welcome to all uh, myself dr dipti ranjan patnaik and i belong to gl bajaj institute of technology and management greater noida so today we will see uh, the next part of the digital communication technique that is source co uh, encoding and uh, before that we will see what is uh, the uh, what is source encoding so here a conversion of the output of a discrete memory less source that is dms into a sequence of binary symbols that is binary code words is called source coding so source coding is nothing but the conversion something we have to convert uh, convert the, that is nothing but the conver uh, conversion of the output of discrete memory less uh, source this is the discrete memory less source it is uh, the uh, uh, it is the sequence of binary symbols x1 up to xm uh, which we can represent as xi or sk and uh, this uh, sequence is converting to bits or binary sequences uh, using source encoder so the device which performance the source encoding is known as your source encoder the process is uh, the process is your source encoding and the device is uh, nothing but the source encoder so objective what is the objective of this uh, source encoding or encoding uh, the what is the objective objective of the source coding is to minimize the average bit rate required for representation of the source by reducing the redundancy of the information source so we have to minimize the average bit bit rate uh, required for representing the source by how to uh, red, uh, minimize by reducing the redundancy of the information source redundancy means unwanted bits okay uh, one type uh, we, we can say that this is uh, this is something like compressing the bits so so before proceeding to the source encoding in depth uh, some terms are related to the source coding are code word length average code word length code efficiency and code redundancy so what is code word length let x be a discrete memory less uh, source with finite entropy h of x and an alphabet x1 up to xm with corresponding probabilities of occurrence p of xi okay that is uh, if this is uh, alphabet x1 with probability p of x1 uh, alphabet x2 with probability p of x2 up to xm with probability p of xm okay so let the binary code word assigned to symbol xi by the encoder have length ni okay measured in bits so your binary code word assigned to symbol xi okay uh, by the encoder uh, with length ni so the length of the code word is the number of binary digits that is number of binary digits that is bits in the code word the simply what is the uh, code word length that is nothing but the length of the code word uh the length of the code word uh, is nothing but the the number of bits uh, binary digits or bits in the code word so next uh, what is average code word length the average code word length l per source symbol is given by l is nothing but the uh, probability of uh, integration of probability of xi and i where i equal to 1 to m because it is averaging because this is integration of uh, from i equal to 1 to m because this is your average code word length the parameter l represents the average number of bits average number of bits uh, per source symbol used in the source coding process next is your code word efficiency the code efficiency which is represented by 
eta is defined as eta equal to L min divided by L, where L min is the minimum value of your L. So, this is your L, what represents L? The average number of bits per source symbol. Okay. So, as eta approaches to unity, the code word is said to be efficient. If eta equal to 1, then this code word, uh, code word is said to be an efficient code word. Now, what is code redundancy? The code re uh, redundancy which is represented by gamma is defined as the gamma equal to 1 by eta. One, that is nothing but the code, code redundancy equal to 1 minus code efficiency. Next, the source coding theorem. So, what is the co source coding theorem? The source co encoding theorem states that for a discrete memory -less source x with entropy h of x, the average code word length L per symbol is bounded as a, your uh, L should be greater than or equal to the entropy. This is your source coding theorem. So, L can be made as close to h of x as desired for suitable chosen code. So, how L can be uh, cl close to h of x by using suitable codes. Thus, with L min equal to h of x, the code efficiency can be rewritten as n eta equal to h of x divided by L. See, your eta is nothing but the L mean divided by L. So, previously we saw, saw that eta equal to L mean divided by L, but as we can see that your this is your what is the minimum value of L that is L mean this will be your h of x. So, I can put this here that is equal to h of x divided by which is nothing but this. Okay. So, this is your source coding theorem. So, different types of codes are there. So, before that, uh, before proceeding that, we have to, uh, I am going to glim, uh, give some glimpse about the different types of codes. Okay. First one is your fixed length code, second one is your variable length code. Next one is your distinct codes. Fourth one is your prefix free codes. Next is uniquely decodable codes. Then next one is your instantaneous codes. And last one is your optimal codes. Okay. Let us say these are the symbols x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4 with uh, it is represented by code 1. Similarly, different codes code 2 this is one type of different code, this is one type of different code, this is one type of different code and this is also one type of different code. So, what is fixed length code? A fixed length code is one whose code word length is fixed. Okay. So, code we have given different codes, these are the different codes code 1 code 1 to code 6. So, fixed for fixed length code, code word length is fixed. We have uh, already read about the code word length that is number of bits used in the code. So, you can see that code 1 and code 2 are, uh, are the example of uh, the fixed code length. See, this code 1, it is length 2, length 2, length 2, this is also length 2, this is also length 2, but this is, you can see this is code length 1, but this is code length 2, this is also different code length 1, but code length 2, this is code length 3, these are also variable, these are also variable. So, only code 1 and code 2 belongs to fixed length codes. So, next is your variable length codes. So, for uh, variable length codes, we can see that a variable length code is one whose code word length is not fixed. So, except your code 1 and code 2, all these three codes, these four codes 
or uh, uh, belong to variable length codes. Okay. Next one is your distinct codes. So, a code word is distinct if each code word is distinguishable from each other. All codes of above table except code 1 are distinct codes. You can see uh, except code 1 all other codes are your distinct codes. How? Because you can see that in code 1 the uh, first x 1 is coded as 0 0 and again x 3 is coded as 0 0, but these are not distinct, these are same. But uh, in the case of uh, code 2, code 3, code 4 and code, code 5 and code 6, you can see that there is no repetition, there is no same codes available in x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4. Next one is your prefix free codes. So, this means that uh, something that prefix is, prefix is not available. So, a code in which no code word can be formed by adding code symbols to another code word is called prefix free codes. So, we can see that in a prefix free codes, no code word is prefix of another that is the main. Okay. In prefix, uh, prefix free codes, no code word is prefix of another code word, code word. So, codes 2, 4 and 6 above table are prefix free codes. See how 2, 4, 6 are uh, prefix free codes, because you can say, remember this, this is, a, uh, this is a for prefix free codes, no code word is prefix of another, prefix means uh, some something is this is the code means in the left part of this code is a prefix. So, you can see that 2, 4, 6. So, t 2 we can say in this case what is happening? For in the case of code 1, it, is, it can see that this code is repeating. So, it cannot be a prefix pre code and code 2 you can see that these all are unique. No code, uh, no code word is the prefix of another. So, you can see that in, in case of code 3, see you can uh, uh, understand very clearly. From code 3, you can see that code 3, code 3 while writing the code 3, you can see that this, uh, this 0 is the prefix, of the prefix of this 0. So, code 1, I mean uh, code 1 for x 1 is can be uh, uh, used as a prefix for code 3 and similarly, this uh, x 2 code, uh, code for x 2 can be used as co uh, prefix for code x 4. Similarly, you can see um, code 4, code 4 this is all this is also there is no prefix 0 is not prefix for any uh, anyone, 1 0 is also not prefix of anyone, 1 1 0 is also not prefix for anyone. Similarly, you can see code 5 0 is prefix for here this this and 0 1 is prefix for this code and this code also, 0 1 1 is prefix for these are. So, these, these are not prefix free codes, these are prefix codes and you can see that code 6, code 6 is uh, you can see this is 1, 1 is not prefix of any other 3 codes, similarly 0 1 is also not prefix of for any other codes, Triple, uh, double 0 1 is also not prefix for other codes. So, you can see that. Uh, these uh, 2, 4, 6 are the prefix free codes. Similarly, uniquely decodable codes, what is uniquely decodable codes? A distinct code is uniquely decodable if the original source sequence can be reconstructed perfectly from the encoded binary sequence. If uh, uh, original uh, your sequence, uh, original sequence can be reconstructed from the uh, encoded uh, which is already encoded sequence. So, a sufficient condition to ensure that a code is uniquely decodable is that no code word is a prefix to prefix, prefix of another. So, thus the prefix free code 2, 4, 6 are uniquely decodable codes, so, because uh, these are prefix codes, prefix free condition is not a necessary condition for a uniquely decodable codes. 
these are not necessary condition but this is one of the one condition is there but this is not necessarily necessary condition so code 5 although it does not satisfy the prefix free condition and yet it is uniquely decodable code since the bit 0 indicates the beginning of each code word of the uh, code okay so code 5 you can see this 0 is starting up every code word so you we can uniquely decode the code 5 also because we already know the every uh, number has the uh, first uh, bit is 0 next one is your instantaneous code so a uniquely decodable code is called an instantaneous code if the end of any code word is the recognizable without examining subsequent code symbols so you can say there the instantaneous code have the property previously mentioned that no code word is a prefix of another code word so prefix free codes are sometimes known as instantaneous codes so uh, from this instantaneous code we can say that instantaneous code is nothing but the if the end of any code word okay if the end of any code word is the recognizable without examining the subsequent code symbol so whatever the prefix codes these are categorized uh, these are uh, we can say that these are categorized as instantaneous codes now what is optimal codes a code is said to be optimal if it is instantaneous and has the minimum average length okay it should be instantaneous and uh, it has a minimum average length l for a given source with a given probability assigned for the source symbol next one is your types of source coding so we are using here we are using two techniques to uh, for source coding that is one is your Shannon Fano coding and second one is your Hoffman coding. So, this is the Shannon Fano coding, uh, the algorithm for Shannon Fano coding. So, first of all, uh, I can go through uh, these are the algorithm uh, steps for algorithms, uh, but uh, we will go through uh, an example and we will see how this algorithm is uh, implemented. So, we can see one example is given let the there be a six source symbols okay x1 to x6 having probabilities x1 equal to 3.0 0 0.25 0 0.20 0 0.12 0 0.08 0 0.05 respectively okay so obtain the shannon fano coding for the given source symbol okay what is the final shannon fano coding for the given uh, symbols source symbols okay so, first of all, what is the algorithm? List the source symbols in a decreasing probability order. I, uh, you mean the, I mean that uh, first is the uh, first uh, term will be has high, highest probability and last one is your lowest probability. So, this problem is given already the uh, from higher to lower probability. So, no need to, uh, no need to suffer anything. So, if there is, uh, if this will not given we have to arrange we have to arrange in a decreasing order okay this this is your algorithm one next is your divide the set into two sets so this is your your set this is your set so divide we will divide this set uh, into two sets that are as close to equally equal probability as possible and assign 0 to the upper set and 1 to the lower set what this uh, want to tell this is the we will divide this probability and check uh, uh, it should be divided so that the upper half and lower half should have nearly equal probability so you can say that this is 0 0.55 and this 4 has uh, 5 this is 0 0.45 okay if i will add 0 uh, this 3 then it would be very great, um, uh, higher number so you can divide this as this is the 0 0.55 this is 0 0.45 nearly equal so upper half i will assign 0 and lower half i will assign 1 
Now, we will see again it has the probability 0 0.30 and 0 0.25. I can divide this okay, second upper of 0, lower of 1. Again, we will see this 4 has to, has to what will happen? See, this is 0 0.20 and rest of 3 are 0 0.25. So, nearly I can divide this as upper half is 0 0.20 and lower half is 0 0.12, 0 0.08 and 0 0.05. So, this is 0 and rest of 3 are 1. Again, I will see this how this 3 will be arranged. See, we can see that this is 0 0.12, this is 0 0.13. So, I can divide again, I can divide this upper half is 0, lower half is your 1, 1. Again, I can see that only 2 left. So, I can see this is your so upper half 0, lower half 1. Now, I will code this. Okay. So, this would be your 0, 0. Okay. Second one is 0, 1. Third one is 1, 0. Fourth one is double 1, 0. Fifth one is your uh, triple 1, 0. Similarly, double 1, double 1. So, these are the output of the San Anfano coding. So, we can also calculate the entropy like uh, we have already seen in the previous classes. We can uh, say that after putting these values, we can get the entropy what is the necessary entropy. Okay? So, similarly, we can find out the average length which is nothing but this is the formula and this is the average length. So, here one point is here it can be observed that the length is more as the probability decreases. So, if probability is less, then if the probability is less, then the length is more. If probability is high, then there is there, uh, there is no need to code uh, maximum uh, number of bits. Similarly, code efficiency is nothing but eta equal to h of x by l. This is redundancy is the of gamma equal to 1 minus eta. Similarly, second one is your Huffman coding. So, same algorithm we will see. At least the source symbols in decreasing probability order. Next, combine the probabilities of the two symbols with the lowest probabilities and reorder the re resulting probabilities. The same procedure is repeating until there are two ordered probabilities remaining. So, we will see we have given x i and p of x i. Okay. So, we will see what is happening we will first decreasing order decreasing order then we will see the see this is your first add two lowest probability orders so it will it would be 0 0.13 okay and we have rest of three these so we can see that 0 0.12 is less as compared to 0 0.13 so we have to shuffle this 0 0.12 and 0 0.13 so, so uh, swapping by this so it would it will go to 0 0.12 and it would be 0 0.13. Now, rest of these are 0 0.35, 0 0.25, 0. Point, this is uh, 2.5, okay. 3, 0, 2.5 and 2, 0. Now, we can see that again 0 0.13 and 0 0.12 are lowest probability. We will add this and 0 0.25 again and it would be 0 0.20. Next, 0 0.25 to 20 it would be 0 0.45. So, it will be highest probability 0 0.35, 30 then 0 0.25. This you can see that how this 0 0.45 is going up because we have to again rearrange the sequence with the probability with decreasing probability. Lowest first is your highest probability, probability and last is one last one is your lowest probability. So, 0 0.25 again this two can be combined and it would be 0 0.55 and this is 0 0.45. Then next step is your after getting these two, I will assign the bit 0 1 to the to this uh, combination. So, I will put this is upper half is your 0, lower half is your 1. Similarly, you can see that the already 0, uh, 0 is the, this is this is belong to this is the 0. Okay, this is 0. So, 0, 0 uh, already there, upper half is 0, lower half 1. This belongs to 1, this is 1. Okay. So, again this belongs to your, you can see that this is your uh, 1, okay. this is your 1, 1, this is your 
upper half again 0 again 1 ok next it would be your directly it would be going to 0 0 it would be going to 0 1 0 1 would be for this one so it would be 0 0 and 0 0 similarly 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 now it would be uh, 1 0 ok 1 1 is uh, happening so this uh, this uh, this point is coming from this so 1 0 is fixed 1 0 is fixed and upper half is 0 lower half is 1 similarly this 1 1 will be directly going to 0 0.2 0 1 1 now 1 0 0 this is 1 0 1 it is coming from this 1 0 0 again 1 0 0 1 0 0 and 1 so i got this this course and it is written like this so here also we can find out the entropy this is the entropy this is the uh, next one is your average length okay next uh, your, your, your code efficiency eta equal h of x divided by l which is 0 0.99 and the redundancy is your gamma equal to 1 by 1 minus eta which is nothing but your 0 0.01 so these are the uh, basic books you can refer for the sign and final code hopman code and basic source coding theorem so thank you